Okay, let's have a look at stress, or rather the stress response. It's sometimes called a fight, flight, or fright response. During the 80s, a study was carried out called the Whitehall 2 study among civil servants of varying grades, high, medium, and low. And it was found that the lower grade showed the highest percentage of coronary heart disease than the other grades, and this was due to stress. Now, it's not just humans that suffer from stress, but most other vertebrate animals as well, many species. And in many species, subordinate animals are more stressed than dominant ones. The stress response is initiated by our senses, which our brain sees as a threat on homeostasis and instructs the body to take appropriate action. So what does that mean? It means that perhaps we are sitting at rest and all of a sudden he suddenly shouts at us or frightens us or just challenges us for some reason or other and our brain sees that as a threat from our normal sense of well-being, our homeostasis, which is, is, us at, at, is us at rest. We are breathing normally, perspiring normally, our pulse rate is normal. But all of a sudden, somebody shouts, somebody frightens us, challenges us, and that's, that kicks in the stress response. And so the brain then takes appropriate action. The appropriate action is the release of hormones into the bloodstream. The stress response involves the, re the release of adrenaline, noradrenaline and cortisol into the bloodstream. The hormones are synthesized, they are made and released from the adrenal glands which are on top of the kidneys. During short term stress only adrenaline and noradrenaline are released which increase the heart rate, increase blood pressure, increase breathing rate, increase blood glucose levels and increase your metabolic rate. Uh, we normally, if we're at rest, our basal metabolic rate is, is at rest. Again, we're not breathing quickly, we're not perspiring, we're just at rest. But when the metabolic rate is increasing, we tend to tick over a bit more quickly. It decreases the digestive activity, decreases excretory activity, and decreases the reproductive activity. During long-term stress, apart from adrenaline and noradrenaline, two other hormones are released, and these are cortisol and aldosterone. Now these hormones have a double whammy effect, as well as the adrenaline and noradrenaline. First of all, aldosterone increases the salt and water retention, increases the blood volume, which increases the blood pressure. Cortisol increases blood glucose levels, increases catabolism of fat and protein, decreases inflammatory response and decreases immune response. Now what cortisol is doing is trying to increase the blood glucose levels even further for energy. I'll explain about that in a minute. Now one of the things it does is to break down, as catabolizes or catabolism, of fat and protein, turning the fat and protein into further glucose. But in doing so, particles of fat and protein start to flow around the bloodstream, they become dislodged, and these stick to arterial walls as atherosclerotic plaques and start to block up the arterial walls, causing coronary heart disease. Cortisol also decreases inflammatory response. Now, if we have an injury or a cut, the inflammatory response is our immune system kicking in straight away. The, you'll get a lot of uh, plus pain, inflammation, tenderness, itching, a lot of heat, redness around the injury. And that's really the body's self-defense mechanisms starting to repair the wound and destroy any bacterial infection that might have come into contact with the wounds. So cortisol actually slows that down. It also decreases the immune response, so you're more susceptible to catching other diseases or disorders. The overall effect of the stress response is to shunt blood away from the skin, digestive system and major organs and send it to the brain, heart and skeletal muscles in readiness to flight or fright or fight. The glucose in the blood level provides the energy required for that response. Obviously this response has evolved with us over tens of thousands of years. 
If you can imagine, perhaps many years ago, as hunter-gatherers, we walked through the forest or through the jungle, and all of a sudden a bear or a lion jumped out to challenge us, that our brain saw as a challenge. What should we do? Should we stay and fight, or should we run off? And that's what happens. The hormones actually increase the blood glucose levels, which increases the energy, and sends that energy, sends the glucose to the leg muscles, to the arm muscles, in readiness to either run off or to fight. So that's where stress really evolved from. Short-term stress is an effective method of coping with a short-term crisis. It enhances alertness. It increases memory formation. It activates the immune system. So as I mentioned earlier, short, sh well not short term, I said stress is good for you. And this is the stress that is good for you, short term stress. Scientists have found that it is a, a good method of coping with the short term crisis. But let's have a look at the, the enemy, a long term stress. Long term stress is not good for you. It must not be tolerated under any conditions. Long-term stress literally will kill you. It reduces the immune system functioning and increases your susceptibility to infectious diseases. Coronary heart disease can be caused by hastened inflammation of atherosclerotic plaques, as I mentioned, by the breakdown, the catabolism of fats and proteins, turning it into further glucose. Stomach ulcers are caused by the interaction of the physiological changes of stress and Helicobacter pylori, which are what we call commensal bacteria present in more pe most people's stomachs. Are they quite harmless as they are, as where they stand? They are protected by the mucus in amongst the membranes of the stomach. But when we come down with long term stress, these bacteria start to eat through the stomach wall and cause ulcers. Long-term stress also suppresses the reproductive function. There's a loss of memory function and subsequent weight loss. But it's not just that. Look at these behavioural symptoms. You find it hard to sleep. You have a change in eating habits, smoking or drinking more, avoiding friends and family, sexual problems. Physical symptoms include tiredness, indigestion and nausea, headaches, aching muscles, palpitations. Psychologically, you may be more indecisive, find it hard to concentrate, suffer loss of memory, perhaps have feelings of inadequacy, low self-esteem. You get irritable or angry more quickly, you feel anxious, you feel numb, you feel more hypersensitive, you feel drained or listless. So it does have serious consequences. Stressors also vary in severity. Now, a couple of scientists called Holmes and Rahm, uh, back in the 60s, they interviewed uh, about a thousand university students in the States, and they put together a scale called life change units, or stressors. And these stressors they found vary in severity. And they came up with about 50 different stressors. Let's look at the top five. Death of a spouse, marital separation, death of a close family member. Personal injury or illness and marriage. And let's look at the bottom five. Change in sleeping habits. Change in number of family get-togethers. Change in eating habits. Holidays. Minor violations of law. Stress levels within the workplace can be reduced. First of all by good job design. Good working conditions. Good feedback and communication. Support for employees at risk and a way of chilling out at the end of a day's work. Healthy lifestyles and relaxation. Sometimes people find that the best counsellors in a job are their own works colleagues. Talking out their job at the end of a day can be uh, a good pressure releasing valve because those stresses, never mind what the stress is, whether there's a customer that has shouted at you or raised their fist to you during the day's job or perhaps you've been bullied at work by a supervisor, all these are stresses and can result in long-term stress. But people find by talking out these stresses or talking through the stresses with other colleagues, it can be like a pressure release valve on help to reduce the stress.